Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to tell you about blocks. So nowadays blocks, the notion of a block appears quite well, literally everywhere in representation theory and maybe even beyond. And this is the origin of the, of the notion. So it appears in modular representation theory of symmetric group in a very natural way and kind of Blocks are kind of the Lego pieces, the building blocks, the smallest um, pieces in the setup you need to study. It's really this idea of decomposing a problem, uh, which I'm going to describe now. And of course, as usual, maybe not of course, but uh, certainly I should start with the semi-simple case. And well, this is a matrix, as you can see, and matrices are great. Matrices is kind of the best notion ever in mathematics and maybe in life, who knows, who knows. Anyway, uh, but the point is, over C, maybe you remember that we had those statements that all simple representation appear in as a direct sum of the, the group ring. And uh, the order of the group is kind of the square of the dimensions of the simples. And this really just means that over C, the uh, group ring itself decomposes into matrix blocks. And each matrix block is of size dimension of the symbols. That's why you get this square condition here, right? So matrix n by n matrices are of dimension n squared, and this is where the square comes from. So I said again, so in the semi-simple case, um, actually the statement is, and a very, very important one, is that the group ring itself decomposes over the symbols into matrices. So really it, into matrix blocks. Um, and that's pretty good because matrices, right? Matrices, do I have to tell you why matrices are good? Uh, I should, uh, but I still don't. So it's just it's just cool. You have matrices, and, uh, the easiest multiplication structure, which is not completely silly, um, that's matrices, right? And you want to do the same in characteristic P, so over in modular representation theory. So you just define, if you want, the blocks to be the indecomposable summons uh, in this decomposition. Um, and it's not quite clear why they should be matrices or whether they're something different or whatever. So here the indecomposable summons are just the matrices. And in general, the definition is just, okay, whatever comes out as an indecomposable summon, that's called a block. Uh, so let's have a look at some examples. So I'm running here um, a gap and uh, sorry, a magma and sage code sometimes, and you can always find it in the description. You can always run it online if you want. Uh, so all of the, the problems I'm going to show you actually can be algorithmically solved. What's I don't have the time in this video to explain algorithms. So anyway, we, we'll go with it. So over, uh, well, S3 is a good example. S3 is always a good example. Over characteristic zeros, over the complex numbers, this is a character table. You have, so this one here, you have three characters, uh, chi1, chi2, chi3. They're just called x1, x2, x3 in uh, this magma code because x1 is just probably nicer, easier to illustrate. Anyway, so you have those three characters and this is how they look like. And the broader characters over F2, the simple ones you, in this case, is really nice. You just cross out. So here it tells me something is fishy in characteristic two. I just cross out that column and whatever remains, you can see now that these two are the same here. So these two are now identical and I only have two characters left. Anyway, so yeah, now I have those character tables, one over C, one over F2. And over C, you can easily see the decomposition now. So you just look at this column here. 1, 1, 2, which has the dimensions, and you get a 1 by 1 matrix associated to chi 1, a 1 by 1 matrix for chi 2, and a 2 by 2, uh, two, by two matrices for chi 3. And that's the decomposition, and of course, 1 squared plus 1 squared, if you write it down, 1 squared plus 1 squared, and 2 squared, that looks like 6 to me, which is the order of the group. And this is exactly the block decomposition into matrices that I mentioned before, just now in a very explicit example. Over F2, something fishy happens. So if you just do the calculation, just once the only remaining ones are one squared and two squared, you're kind of too short, right? This can't, this is not six, uh, certainly not the sum of them, certainly not six. Uh, so something is wrong. And what happens here is the following. So you still have the two by two matrix block corresponding to this representation. So this is a semi-simple as a semi-simple part, but the other two, they kind of cluster together. And instead of a matrix, you see this algebra here, which is sometimes called the dual numbers. It's very, very simple two-dimensional algebra, which is not a matrix algebra. And uh, it's just the polynomial ring and you kill x squared. So this is really already showing, and this has the indicators, these are the blocks in this case. And this is showing you that actually blocks do not need to be matrix algebras in general. 
And this is really just a simple calculation we can do here. Um, and you can keep on going. So you can, of course, uh, do the second prime, which is a little bit strange for S3. It turns out that, well, uh, it already tells us here's a problem in characteristic three. So we just cross out the last one and that's exactly what you need to do. And it turns out that you get those characters and it looks like they're all different, but observe now that the third one is the sum of the second, the other two. So one, one, two, one minus one, zero. So you actually only have two characters. Um, two, two simple raw characters here, so uh, Kai 1 and Kai 2. And over C, we still, of course, uh, nothing changed. It's just the same with decomposition. And over um, uh, F3, you get this funny block decomposition um, because of this uh, character coincidence here, that the characters are the same module with 3. And, um, well, again, no, there's no matrix blocks at all. So this is very non-semi-simple actually, and this is roughly how the blocks look like. So that's what you should expect. So in the non semi case, there might be matrix components, but most of the components, whatever most means, are not matrix components. So most blocks are not matrices and kind of the semi-simple parts are always the matrix blocks and everything else is kind of potentially quite, quite complicated. And this is exactly the definition. So we take our algebraically closed field. Uh, you want to have algebraically closed because at one point you will apply some Jordan decomposition theorem anyway. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter right now. And you decompose it into indecomposable two-sided ideals. And this is your decomposition. It's unique up to reordering and whatever you see is existence in decomposition if you want and uniqueness if you want. And whatever you see, that's what you call a block. And it turns out that there's a construction of those blocks yeah, just in one-to-one -one correspondence with idempotents, right? So this was idempotents. Doesn't matter so much for this video. And the point is, and it's it's a non, not completely trivial theorem that the simples and even the simples over C, uh, they kind of decompose nicely into blocks. They're partitioned by blocks. So in some sense, it's completely enough to study the block decomposition and then do it block-wise because the simples uh, arrange themselves according to blocks anyway. And even the simple characters over C, which are um, uh, linear combinations of Brouwer characters, uh, even those fit nicely into the blocks as we have seen here. So actually this is just one block. I will explain that in a second. And well, everything is within one block by the linear combination. So you can run, well, this is algorithmically, so you can solve that algorithmically, you can run the code. Uh, so you have a symmetric group character table, in characteristic five, I'm cheating a little bit here. The first one is, of, of course, over C, but I tell it it's characteristic five, which is good enough. It's it's a set, the, the prime is not dividing three factorial, which is the order of the group. So this is kind of approximating C anyway. And then I have a block over two, which we had before, and I have a block in characteristic three, which we also had before. So here, this is the semi-simple part. The blocks. So this is the decomposition of the character table into blocks. First character is in its own block. Second character is its own block. Third character is its own block. And this is really the decomposition of the simple complex characters. I said again, the statement here is pretty strong. Even the simplex com simple complex characters can be decomposed into blocks. And that's exactly what happens here in this code. So here in the other one, the first two formed one component. Let's go back. So here, this was this example where those two coincided and they would just correspond to this block component here. And the other one is in its own block. So this is a matrix. And here they just all sit in one block. So and kind of everything in between can happen. That's the, well, that's basically non-semi-simple means everything can happen. And the more complicated it looks, the further it is away from the nice semi-simple picture. And the semi-simple picture is really just everything sits in its own block which is then saying that everything is a matrix ring, the matrix algebra, right? So this is a semi-simple picture and the more complicated it gets, the further you're away from the semi-simple world. So it's not just decomposing the problem using those really, really strong good theorems here, but also kind of a measurement of how far away your case is from being semi-simple. The more complicated the blocks are, the more non-semi-simple you are. And well, it turns out that that's what is called the principal block. Again, a notion that appears very often in representation theory, but here, this is where it comes from. The principal block is just the block of the true representation. I told you before, simple representations arrange themselves according to blocks. The simple uh, trivial representation will end up somewhere. Just call that the principal block, and it's the most complicated block in the following sense. 
Um, so this is trivial. So it's it's the trivial, even only if um, the algebra is semi-simple. So it's by far the most complicated and you can make a more, even more sophisticated statement. So here I list, they takes a symmetric group 10, again, the code you can use in the uh, description and characteristic three. And this is how it looks like. And this is the principal block because here's the trivial representation. And as you can see, it's by far the biggest and everything else is uh, smaller. And that's again, general. So the biggest block will always be uh, the principal representation block, uh, the, pr the principal block, the one for the trivial representation. It's kind of a cool statement or about group theory that um, all the complexity of being non semi simple is usually hidden in the trivial representation. Okay, so today's topic were blocks, which is, well, there are two ways to think about blocks, or well, there are certainly more ways, but two ways I tried to sell you today. One was it decomposed your problem because now you can arrange the simples according to blocks and pretty cool, even the complex simple characters. So you can write down your classical character table and it will arrange itself into blocks, which is pretty cool statement. Uh, anyway, the second way of thinking about it would be kind of uh, a measurement of uh, non semi simplicity. The more complicated the block structure is, the more semi simple the algebra is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.